Greetings from Faith Assembly of God, Smith Grove, Kentucky. I'm Pastor Wade Martin Hughes, and uh, we want to share some things uh, with you today and uh, hope that you can join in with us. We always ask, if at all possible, pass it on to somebody else. Our hands are so small, and we ask that you would do that. We have heard from India. We have heard from the Philippine Islands. We've heard from several states, from Michigan, Pennsylvania. Uh, and we appreciate everybody that uh, passes our work on. We are Faith Assembly of God, P.O. Box 331, Smith Grove, Kentucky, 42171. You can also reach us via email, kyfingers, k-y-f-i-n-g-e-r-s, at aol.com. Uh, and uh, we're, we're reachable there. And we're reachable and probably get most of our contacts through YouTube, although it's hard to tell exactly because where it passes on, we don't all the time get a count back. But we appreciate you tuning in and being with us. We appreciate Mr. Larry Carter on the other side of the camera. Uh, we're making Larry famous. Uh, he really appreciates that. And one of these days, I'm going to work the camera and make him sit here. He's one of the best Sunday school teachers uh, that we've ever known. We have prayed. I, I prayed for a little bit over two hours this morning. And uh, uh, we, we have several requests. Pastor Tom Lane and his wife Pam. Pam's going through some serious health issues. And uh, we ask that you would be in prayer for them. We ask for prayer for Billy and Pammy Meeks, uh, I think that's nicknames, it's Bill and Pam Meeks, pastor of the Holinwalt, Tennessee uh, Assemblies. His kidneys have quit working, he's on dialysis, and you know how dialysis is oftentimes very complicated, and his wife, I think, is in the rest home uh, with cancer, so we ask that you would be in prayer for them. We did go get an MRI on our shoulder uh, Monday. Uh, the pain is constant, and uh, thank God it's not a rotator cuff, uh, but it's bursitis and, and uh, some of those issues. We're waiting on an appointment with the orthopedic doctor, so we, we do ask for your prayers. Let's get right into the lesson. Uh, I, I think life's about how we answer questions. How do you love hard to love people? Uh, some people are very easy to love. There, there's a, it's easy to love a, a Corvette, uh, a Porsche. It's easy to love those uh, sometimes it's harder to love a Pinto or a Chevette. Uh, we need to know that there are some people that's absolutely easy to love. I mean, it's just natural for you to love them. They're kind. They're, they're all of those issues. And then there's some people that's like sandpaper. They're very, very hard to love. Um, uh, Life's about how we ask questions. Uh, I, I, I wonder if the current events of the world, it's very alarming that it appears Russia and China are getting together on the page of agreement. It appears that Iran and Iraq, uh, Syria and Jordan, 
are, are uh, they're aligning uh, themselves together and could mean great danger for the world. Uh, the world is under division uh, and uh, we need to be in prayer about that. But we need to know that the test of God, how, how does God measure us? What's the criteria uh, of us being a Christian? Well, there is one criteria that's very clear. By this all men shall know that you have love one for another. I, I oftentimes wonder if one of the easiest ways to get a person to sell out and go to hell is by getting us to dislike people of uh, different colors, of different nationalities, uh, of differing opinions. Uh, I think we need to find some common ground to align on. It's, it's on how we ask the question, is it a woman's right to have an abortion? Well, if you ask that question, it might appear to be okay. But if we ask the question, and, and listen, I'm not looking for popularity. Uh, I, I believe in standing what's right. Does the baby have the right to live? And I wonder, in all the millions of babies that have been killed, I wonder if there had been a Billy Graham in the midst of those numbers. I wonder if there's uh, somebody that, uh, in that crew that was killed, uh, I wonder if somebody might have found a cure for cancer. Uh, we, we just, uh, wow, wow. It's on how we ask the question. Uh, I, I've, I've got a question. First person I ever heard ask this question, of course it's in the Bible, uh, was Lori Vanucci in Martin, Kentucky. Uh, and I see that they're celebrating the 50th year of that church. Brother Vanucci's been dead a couple of years. But he would ask a question on a regular basis. Where is the God of Elijah. Where is the God of Elijah? And Lori Venucci always said that's the wrong question. The right question is where are the Elijahs of God? We want to speak on walking in blessings and we want to start off with asking you everybody's a prisoner of something a habit, uh, a thinking pattern, negative, positive, we, we all become prisoners. But Zechariah 9.12 is, is a verse that I really like. Uh, it says, Zechariah 9.12, Turn ye to the stronghold, ye prisoners of hope. I, I, I love that. Prisoners of hope. We, we're, we're locked up with hope. Uh, even to this day do I declare to you that I will render double unto you. There is this spiritual concept of being in the center of the will of God. Then there is that we can take a step backwards and be in the permissive will of God. That's not what God wants for us, but he will tolerate that. Then there is this concept of being out of the will of God. And uh, I, I believe that God wants to bless his people. I believe he wants to render to his people double uh, double blessings. I believe in the concepts of blessings, but I believe there is more to just being blessed. And uh, God has a plan, and God's plan is for us to have more than uh, wealth, more than prosperity. I, I hear that quoted, 
God wants us to be prosperous. Uh, even, they don't say that, even as our soul prospers. Uh, the most important thing is, and, and we get them turned around, I have never spoke at a church that I asked, we serve a triune God, right? Yeah, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. We are triune individuals. And I, if I asked, and, and I've asked across the state, I, I've asked, what are we? And I, the answer's always been body, soul, and spirit. That's not how the Bible lists it. The Bible lists spirit, soul, and body. So just by simply turning those around and making the body the priority, the happiness, the joy, or, or whatever, God says if we'll take care of the spirit man and the soul, what would a man give in exchange for a soul? Well, God's plan is to give us double. I, I'm not asking where's the God of Elijah, because God's everywhere. He's down in the deepest. I saw they discovered 15 more miles of Mammoth Cave. It's over 400 miles of caves on five different levels, and they're constantly finding more. On the average, I think they say they're finding about one more mile a month of the cave. On, on the five different levels. Well, I believe God has different levels for us, and I believe that we live beneath our privilege. And I'm asking us that we would get a whole lot more serious in these last days. Uh, God promised he would repay his people with many blessings he wants to restore unto us what our enemy has stole. Remember the old song, I went to the enemy's camp and I took back what he stole from me. I took back what he stole from me. Uh, let's look at uh, three individuals, Old Testament. Mentioned in the New Testament, uh, but but... Let's look at three different people. And the first two people, uh, the names are so easy. The, the first person we want to talk about is Elijah. And then he has an understudy named Elisha. It is very easy as I speak to accidentally get those words turned around. And if I do, forgive me and understand that. And then the third dude that we want to see that was an understudy is Gehazi. Uh, Gehazi. And uh, we, we're on a journey. We, we're all on a journey. It's more than the destination that we're headed to. Uh, we're on a journey. And where you go on your journey is your choice. Hopefully... In a little bit, I'll load up in the car. I think I already have the music and stuff loaded up in the car. Head towards Jellico, Tennessee. It, it'll be what, uh, 70? It'll be our 52nd uh, year out of high school. And uh, I, I, I hope to do that. But we're all about the choices that we make. We're all about the choices that we make. The man going to death row turns around and tells the uh, national radio preacher, I am what I am because that's what I chose to be. You're all about your choices. You can drop out in kindergarten or you can drop out in eighth grade or high school or college. 52% uh, of people that start college do not finish. Only 48% do. So it, it is much easier to quit. But ministry and life 
is it, it, it's about the journey. It's about your choices. Uh, division, strife, anger, panic attacks, all, all these things are choices. Now, you know and I know there is a clinical depression that, that has nothing to do about choices. It's uh, chemical imbalances. I, I'm not talking about that. But you go make a choice. If we draw nigh to God, the Word of God says He will draw nigh to us. I think the inverse of that would be very true. If we make the choices to walk away from God, God is going to allow us to do that. Uh, your choice, whether you walk in blessings or curses, your choice, but let me tell you, it is my desire to not just walk in the blessings of God, but to walk in the double blessings of God. Uh, 2 Kings 2 verse 9, And it came to pass, when they were gone over, that Elijah said unto Elisha, Ask what I shall do for thee before I'm taken away from you. And Elisha said, I pray thee, let me have a double portion of thy spirit. Let it be on me, a double portion. And Elijah says back, boy, you're asking for a hard thing in verse 10. You're asking a hard thing. But nevertheless, if you're with me when I'm taken away, if you see me when I'm taken away, it shall be unto you. But if not, it shall not be unto you. You're going to make the choice, Elisha. If, if we'll go back several years over time, Elijah is... A man is never a success without a successor. And here we go. He's, he's going to minister, and he looks out in the field, and he sees Elisha out there working in the field. And he calls him and says, Come on, follow me. Follow me into the blessings of God. And Elisha kills his oxen, he burns his bridge, he can never go back. Uh, sometimes we need to burn our bridge to get into the flow of the blessing. Uh, wow. I, I want a double blessing of your spirit. And let's be honest, he's talking about the Holy Spirit of God that's resting on Elijah. And, and he says, that's what I want. He's made the choice. I, I don't just want to walk in blessings. I want to walk in double. Uh, I, I, I'm that way when I eat an ice cream cone. I don't want one dip. Give me two dips. I want a double portion. I, I want a double portion. We, we have recently, so I don't have to, you can go back and look. But Elijah is on a journey from deep, 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 deeper. And the journey starts off in Gilgal, which in a recent study, that means rolling stones, not attached, not faithful, not accountable. Boy, how many do I know today that are accountable to nobody? They don't believe in accountability. Uh, I, I, I do. I believe you need to, number one, hold yourself accountable. And number two, you need to hold somebody over you that will keep you accountable. So there's Gilgal. Uh, again, I, I don't need, but maybe you haven't seen. Then after Gilgal, uh, the journey that they're going for the double portion ends up in Bethel. All of these places are an ascension going up higher. 
Bethel means the house of God. It means prayer. It means devotions. It means study. Study to show yourself a, a workman uh, approved. Uh, and then the journey, uh, that's nice. How many people are aborted at Gilgal or at Bethel? There is another place in the journey to the double portion, and that's Jericho. Jericho means praise. It means sweet fragrance. Uh, it, it, I, I'm alarmed as an old gray-haired preacher that in our churches we worship, worship, and we praise, praise. I, I've been to many churches where uh, they're worshiping, they got a worship team, a professional worship team up front singing and the crowd is standing there with their arms folded, not singing, not, hey, the whole reason that we have worship teams is to lead people to the throne of God. We're not looking for polished, professional singing musicians, we're looking for people that will lead us to the very heart of God. And we got to, it's, it's easy to fall in the habit of worship and worship and praise and praise. And I, I, I know that might not make a lot of sense, but there, there is a whole lot of sense there. So the fourth step in the process is the Jordan. Jordan being death. Jordan being uh, given up stubbornness and given up selfishness and, 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 and uh, applying yourself to a greater level. Uh, and uh, let's go to 2 Kings 2 verse 15. At every opportunity in the journey the old preacher tells the young preacher, if you want to, you can turn around and quit right here. And the young preacher says, no, nope, I'm, I'm not going to do it. I've come this far. He's worked for the preacher for years and years and years. He's been very faithful to Elijah. I'm sure there's times that Elisha would have done things different than Elijah did. But the word submission, which is a dirty word today, the word submission comes into play here. And on this journey, uh, Elijah takes his mantle and rolls it up and crosses the Jordan River that was believed to be flooded at that time, and they go. And in 2 Kings 2 verse 15, they're coming, uh, Elijah's gone. God's taken him away in a whirlwind. Elisha knows his journey is not over, it's just started. Second Kings 2 verse 15. And when the sons of the prophets, which were to view at Jericho, saw him, they said unto him, See, the double portion is recognizable. The spirit of Elijah does rest on Elisha. And they came to meet him, and they bowed down themselves to the ground before him. I, people don't have to ask if you're walking in the double portion, in the double blessings of God. Uh, they, they don't have to ask. So here is the guy and the student that studies diligently and does everything that was asked of him. The next prophet in line, uh, the Bible doesn't say much about how he was picked, but his name is Gehazi, uh, the English. Uh, I looked it up in in Hebrew, and it's Gehazi, Gehazi in Hebrew. So Elijah passes the torch, the mantle to Elisha. Elisha is preparing a man named Gehazi to
to take his place. Again, you're never a success till you have a successor. Am I going to walk in blessings or am I going to walk in curses? It all depends upon your choices. Again, you are a product of your choices. God's blessings are not automatic chocolate pie falling out of the sky. Uh, we have so taught God of love that we bypass the God of judgment. I, I was in on campus, LMU, Lincoln Memorial University, and we had an atheist that was a teacher. And uh, he kept talk about how God's a God of love. God's a God of love. And everybody in the class said, yeah, yeah, God really loves us. He, and the teacher said, if there's a God, he, he, he really, 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 really loves you. And everybody agreed uh, that God really, really, really loves you. And the class was almost over, and he always addressed me as Hughes. He said, Hughes, do you serve a loving God? And I, I said, yes, I do. He said, if God loves people so much, he won't send them to hell. I didn't have to think about it. I mean, just instantly the answer came to me. You're absolutely right, Professor. You're absolutely right. You can't find one woman, one boy, one girl, one, you, you can't find anybody in hell that's in hell because God sent them there. It was their choices. And again, let's go back to you determine how close you are to God. My dad says there's this flower that blooms twice a year. He called it Easterus Christanthemum. They bloom at Easter and they bloom at Christmas time. And you won't see them at church again. Uh, you can say, I join the army, go down to the recruiter, join the army, get a uniform, and say, send me my check every month. But if you don't report to duty, uh, uh, we, we, we're walking so far away from God that we're standing on the edge of a cliff. When I was a little boy, there was a couple that often came and visited us. They had a camper on the back of a pickup truck. Their last name was Yeary, and they were from Goshen, Ohio, which my mom's roots go back to Goshen, Ohio. And one day we were sitting around at the parsonage, and and Brother Yeary said uh, they'd been to the Grand Canyon, and he said as he stood on the lip of the Grand Canyon, something kept saying to him, jump off, jump off, jump off. His wife's name was Desiree, and Desiree, uh, somebody asked her sitting around in a small group, what well, did you feel the same way? Did you feel like jumping off the edge. And she said, no, never crossed my mind. And they said, why? She said, I never got closer than 10 foot to the edge. So the closer we walk to the edge, the closer we hang around with people that have low moral values, that we lower our standards, the closer it is that we are going to choose to live in less than the best. Uh, and so here we come along. Elisha is teaching and training Gehazi. And wherever Elisha goes, Gehazi goes, he watches, he learns, he does all of this. And one day, a big caravan uh, of uh, limousines, maybe Rolls Royces, Mercedes, maybe it was camels and donkeys and horses, I, I don't know. But this big group of important people came up outside Elisha's house. And uh, Gehazi goes out and inquires what's wrong. 
And there's a guy that has leprosy. Gehazi has the potential of being an Elijah or Elisha. He has the same potential. And he goes out and inquires, and there's a man there named Naaman that is white with leprosy and is dying. They tell the story that during the battle, they captured a Jewish girl, maiden, and took it home, and, and she served Naaman's wife. And the, the girl said, Naaman don't have to suffer. There's a man over in Israel that if they'll go to him, he can be healed. So Naaman thought, I might as well try. I'm going to die this way. So he goes and this group's standing out there. And they're very important people. They're dressed in, in swanky clothes. They, they, they've got everything. They've got money. They've got thousands of dollars of money. And they explain to Gehazi, we've come to be healed. So Gehazi goes in the house and says to Elisha, Elisha, they've come for a healing, and I think we should go outside and heal the dude. And Elisha says, no, I'm not going to do it. He doesn't even go look out the screen door. Uh, he doesn't go out. He says to Gehazi, go out and tell him, dip in the Jordan River seven times and you'll be healed. Well, Gehazi thought that Elisha should go out there and meet these important people. Elisha didn't think that. And he tells the story and probably tells it in the light of a negative thing. And uh, wow, Naaman gets very angry and says, if he'd asked me, uh, I'd... Uh, and his servant says, listen, if he'd asked you to do something important, you would have done it. If he asked you for a big offering, you would have done it. But he just asked you to go dip it. And he says, Naaman says, yeah, that's a dirty river. Don't we have cleaner rivers at home? Well, sure enough, you do. But you make the choice. You make the choice. And so Naaman says, well, I guess what's it going to hurt? And uh, Gehazi goes back in and tells Elisha, uh, boy, he didn't like it. He didn't like it at all. But Elisha says, it's his choice. He, he can receive his healing if he wants. It's, it's his choice. So the, the uh, Second Kings uh, 5, verse 25, and he went in and stood before his master. Gehazi goes in and stands before Elisha. And he says, Whence come thou, Gehazi? And he said, Oh, nowhere. Your, siv your servant went. Well, I didn't go anywhere, no whither. He's lying. We see the failure of moving not only away from the double blessing, but moving away from the blessing and moving towards the curse. He's lying to the man of God. If you'll notice a man of God, he's a man before he is of God. Uh, men don't all the time do stuff right. Uh, and and uh, Elisha says, let me tell you something in verse 26. Didn't my heart go with you? Wouldn't I have liked all those presents and fame and, and all of that? Didn't my heart go with you? When the man turned again from his chariot to meet you, is it a time to receive money and to receive garments and olive yards and 
vineyards and sheep and oxen and men servants and maid servants. Does the blessings of God come in prosperity alone? Probably where there is prosperity, there is a movement away from the blessings of God. And we could walk you through that over and over and over. And with tears in his eyes, see, Elisha saw the potential in Gehazi. He saw what he could be, but no, he's not going to submit. And, and several issues come into play. The issue of selfishness. Gehazi selfish. Gehazi is greedy. But let's don't minimize the truth. It's sin. S-I-N. What's in the middle of sin? I. What's in the middle of Lucifer? I. I is going to get me in trouble. He says, okay, you, you've got, you've got wealth now. You, you've got the silver and gold from them. You've got all those fancy clothes. But it's as logical to me as could be that the clothes might not have been sanitized and that the leprosy of Naaman that he was healed from was in those clothes. And when Naaman tried them on, the leprosy is going to cling, cleave to him, it says in verse 27. That's not the sad part of walking in less than the best. Uh, of the permissive will or out of the will. You might need to write this down. Sin is going to cost you more than you're going to plan on paying. Sin is going to take you away longer than you planned on staying. Sin takes you further away from God. Sin costs you more than you planned on paying. And sin will keep you longer than you planned on staying. Not only is Gehazi not going to walk in the double blessing, he's not going to walk in the bless, he's going to walk in the curse. I have a friend played music with me to rest home in the, the church with, with Larry and with us. Uh, he passed away uh, some time ago. It will soon be a year, I think, October, I, I, I believe. Uh, but we sowed all kinds of seeds. We played music in rest homes. We played music in churches. We played music in people's houses. We, we done all that. But Don was more than uh, sowing seeds spiritually. He probably, he probably grew the biggest, best garden of anybody I ever knew. Uh, he had serious breathing problems. So he'd get up before the sun came up and go out and work in the garden. And, and uh, uh, he, he he grew all this wonderful stuff. But he was in poor health. He was in the hospital three times uh, before he passed away. And each time he got weaker and weaker and ended up with COVID, was on the ventilator for three weeks. And his wife was going to have to make the choice about um, taking him off the ventilator. And the day we went where we was going to have to make that decision before we got to the hospital, Don passed away. And uh, he, he sowed seeds, he ate tomatoes, cucumbers, corn, he, uh, gourds. He, he, he grew it all. But there was something that we never thought about. We never thought about all of the canning, the court jars, the hat jars, and and all the 
putting up the deer meat and, 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 and all of that. We never thought about Don not being there. Linda and I was at the house one day and uh, I, I just asked permission of his wife, Barbara. I said, can I go out and stand in the garden? And she said, sure you can. I, I went out there. I picked a tomato and I ate it. There was green peppers. There, there was all the stuff in the garden that he planted that he never got to enjoy. He left it all behind. I, I, I've got a quart jar of tomato juice that he gave me before he died. And I look at it every now and then and I think about what kind of seeds have I planted and what am I leaving behind? Am I going to walk in the valley of the shadow of death? Yeah, I, I am. And you are too. And what are you going to leave? Elijah, Elisha, Gehazi. Gehazi's whole family is going to suffer because he didn't realize where sin led him. I've been sort of hot and heavy on the computer and the cell phone and, 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 and all of this. Uh, I'm going to get in trouble, but the other night we was at home and, and just Linda and I, and, and she's sitting over there. She has this big, is it called an iPad or something? And, and she loves to play Candy Crush or something. She's over there. And, and I just took my phone and I texted her, Babe, I I'm sitting over here. I can take you to several couples. In a third of all divorce cases, the computer or the cell phone is listed as one of the causes of the divorce. I can take you to people that's divorced today because of what they started as a little seed and it ended up destroying their life. Not that they can't rebuild it, but we need to think, am I going to walk in the blessings, the double blessings, or am I going to walk in the curse? I was talking to somebody not too long ago, and they were concerned because somebody they knew got mad at them and they was concerned that that person was going to put a curse on them. Uh, and I told them not to worry and they said, what, what do you mean? When God blesses you, he blesses you and nobody can curse you. Have I got proof of that? Absolutely. Genesis 12 verse 1 says, now the Lord said to Abram, later Abraham, get out of this country, get away from your kindred, get away from your father's house unto a land that I'm going to show you. Verse 2, and I will make thee a great nation, and I will bless thee. I will make your name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. One of the reasons that we should get in the center of the will of God's blessings that we should be faithful to our family, that we should be faithful to our church. What kind of church would my church be if every member were just like me? Uh, uh, it closed down Sunday night. Many of our churches in this area, I, I was in this city not too long ago on a, on a Wednesday night, and I looked for a church to go to. And I drove to a church parking lot's empty. I drove to another church, parking lot's empty. I drove to another church. Finally, the fourth church, I found a little small group, and I, I mentioned something, and they said, we don't have a choice but to close service because nobody is coming. Nobody's coming. That great falling away. 
I want to tell you, if you're going to walk in the blessings or in the double blessings, if you're going to be in the great blessings, if you're going to be so much in the great blessings that everybody that you're around is going to be blessed, uh, that's, that's worth, that's worth it, I think. Verse 3, and I will bless them that bless you, and I will curse them that curse you. And in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. You don't have to worry about somebody in anger cursing you if you're walking in the blessings of God. If you are walking in the blessings of God. There's a guy in the Bible named Balaam. Uh, B-A-L-A-A-M, Balaam, was offered a great national ministry, a television ministry. He was offered great wealth. He was going to be famous. He was going to be a high priority. As a matter of fact, he's mentioned in the book of Revelations as well as a couple other places. And, And they asked Balaam, the enemy asked Balaam, I want you to curse Israel. I want you to curse them. And he says, deal, deal, I, I, I'll do it. And he goes and he stands over and he's compromising the value systems. He, he's an evil man. And, and it says in Numbers 23, verse 8, how can I curse whom God has not cursed, or how shall I defy whom God has not defiled? And Numbers twenty three twenty, Behold, I have received commandment to bless, and he has blessed, and I can't reverse it. Let, let me tell you what this guy is trying to undo what God's doing. If God's blessing you, if you're in the double portion, you're going to be greatly blessed and you're going to greatly bless. Let me tell you what he did. He said, you know what? I can't, I can't curse him. I can't curse him. But I'll tell you what to do if you want him to be cursed. Let your women marry their men. Let them commit adultery. Send your women out and commit adultery uh, with these guys. See, it's their choices. And when they come out from underneath the blessings of God for the approval and compromise of the world, sure, we want to be popular. Balaam wanted to be popular. He told them how to bring a curse on God's people, get them to walk away from their faithfulness, Just get them to walk away. Get them to walk away. My mom always said, don't play with fire. My mom said, if you play with fire, boy, wet the bed that plays with fire. But she said this. She said, those that play with fire will sooner or later get burned. It'll keep you longer. It'll take you further and it'll cost you more. It's all a matter of priorities to walk in the blessings and the double portion versus the curse. I'll tell you how you make the choice to walk away from God, to not love people, to not keep the commandments. You make that choice. Look what it says in Matthew. It says in Matthew 6, verse 31, Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat? Don't worry about it. What shall we drink? Don't worry about it. We're coming up on some dark days in history. And and, uh, I believe in being prepared, but I don't believe in hoarding. Don't worry about what you're going to wear. For it's all these things that the Gentiles seek. Matthew pins these words saying, if you'll seek God's blessings... Look what he says. Look what he says. For your father knows what needs that you have and all the needs that you have, he's going to take care of. But in verse 33, 
he tells the secret to walking in the double blessing and the blessing and avoiding the curse and the sin. He says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added to you. My mom was, was in intensive care, St. Joe's, Lexington, Kentucky. And uh, mom, I, I was sitting over and, and uh, just looking in my mom's brown eyes. I knew she'd be not with us very long. And there's this beautiful young nurse come in and mom said, do you go to church? And she said, no, I don't go to church. Four or five years ago, I got hurt really bad at church and I promised I'd never go to church again. Said I, I never set a foot back in the church. And mom said, why take out on God what some human being has done? Mom said, I suggest to you that you buy a pair of shoes, two nails and a hammer, and you go now those shoes to church and you be there every time the doors are open so God can bless you. I could take you through the trail of tears that that nurse followed. She, she, she didn't see the need to do that. We, we expect to give God bad stuff, leftover stuff, junk stuff, and yet we plan on God giving us good stuff. If you live in a day-to-day -day panic attack, broken spirits, crushed families, not in church, and, and yeah, I, I, I'm amazed. <laughs> Listen to me. I'm amazed we can't go to church with hypocrites, but you go to Walmart with them. You go to the gas station with them. But you can't go to church with them. So you want to go to hell with them? Don't make no sense to me. It's just an excuse to walk away from your blessings and from your double blessings. Galatians 6 verse 7 says, Be not deceived, for God's not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Verse 8 says, For he that sows to the flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption, but he that sows to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. I've seen people that come and grab the hold of the horns of the altar and prayed and cried and prayed and cried, was very faithful to church. We talked about this last week. And they slowly start backing out the domino effect they back out the ripple effect it starts real little they quit coming to the altar they start playing hooky from church they start spending time on the computer they end up in jail you say preacher you don't know what you're talking about Ask Larry if I know what I'm talking about. Do I know what I'm talking about, Larry? Yes, sir. We've seen it time and time again. And then I've seen those that decided they'd stay a hold of the horns of the altars. And they cry and they pray and they intercede. And they walk in the blessings of God. And listen, I, I love that, but I want the double blessing. Do you remember Luke 23, verse 42? There's a guy that is dying. He's hanging on the cross. One guy over there is mocking Jesus and said, if you're really the Son of God, come down. The man over here wasn't worthy of anything. He just looked over at Jesus and said, remember me. I want you to remember that God blesses those that walk according to his word. The day is coming. I'm 70. I forget things. I don't all the time remember everything. The day is coming when 
Maybe I won't even remember my family. That's so sad to see a person slowly fade away and die as their mental capacities go. Maybe the day will come that I won't even remember who my friends are. Maybe the day will come when I don't even remember who I am. We work with people in the rest home that forget how to eat. They can't swallow. They, they put food in their mouth and take an a ice-cold spoon and touch it to their throat to get them to swallow. The day may come that I, I can't remember to swallow. But if Jesus will remember me, Jesus says today, some Bible scholars suggest that Jesus died first and, and hung around for a little while so this thief could go with him. When I fail, will I get up and go again? Will I walk in the blessings? Jesus says to him today, you'll be with me. When I can't remember, I, I hope I never come to that day. But when I can't remember, when I say the same things over and over and over again, when I do all of that, let's skip from to Philippians 3, verse 13. I'm going to skip 12. Brethren, I count not myself to apprehended. I haven't made it. But this one thing I do, I forget the things that are behind me, and I'm reaching forward to the things which are before me. I'm reaching forward for the blessings of God. Remember Jacob wrestling all night with the angel and said, I'm not going to let go of you until you bless me. What question are we asking? Where's the God of Elijah? No, I'm asking, are you an Elisha of God? Are you Elijah of God? Or are you Gehazi of God? See, it's all up to you. All things work together, Romans 8, 28. For them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. There's a lady named Nancy Harmon wrote this song, and I'd like to read you the words. I've come too far to look back again. There's nothing behind me. All the treasures I used to love have all faded from my view. There's a new day ahead for me. All my heart aches are over for I've left it at Calvary where my new life begins. I want to walk in that blessing. The Course says, I've come too far to look back. My feet have walked through the valleys. I've climbed mountains. I've crossed rivers. Desert, desert places I have known. But I'm nearing the home shore. The redeemed are rejoicing. Heaven's angels are singing. I've gone too far to look back. Look around. There's no happiness. There's no reason for living. Life will give you a broken dream full of sorrow and fear. Turn around. Don't look back again. Face the new day before you. Place your fears in Jesus' hands. He can mend broken dreams. But I'm nearing the home shore. The redeemed are rejoicing. Heaven's angels are singing. I've come too far to look back. Well, my time's come and gone again. Wow. Wow. Let's close in Philippians 4.19.
I don't know what's going to happen in the world. I don't know if there's going to be more toilet paper shortages and coffee shortages and, and food shortages. I don't know. But I do know Philippians 4.19 says, My God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory and by Christ Jesus. I could write you a check for $100,000 right now, but it would be worthless. It's no greater than what's in the account. I will tell you, if you walk in God's blessings, if you walk in the double blessings of God, if you'll be the man, where are the Elishas of God? I want you to answer that right here. Isaiah 6, 8, here I am, Lord, send me. That's not there, Larry. Sorry about that. Did I say I close? I'm not going to close. No weapon formed against you, Isaiah 54, 17, shall prosper. If I walk in God's blessings, God's going to make a way for me. And every tongue that shall arise against me in judgment, shall be condemned. There is the heritage of the servants of the Lord and the righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. I don't have time to go there, but I will tell you if you'll just hang on. If you'll get so close to the heart of God, one person is recorded in all of history of laying his head on the chest and hearing the divine heartbeat that's John the Beloved. Why can't we walk in the ram of the double portion? Don't settle for less. Well, our time's come and gone. We're over time. I ask two things of you. If there is any way possible, and it's okay if you don't, would you pass this on and enlarge our hands? My hands are so little. I don't know if Larry will put his hand in front of the camera there, but his hands are small. But the hands of our God, it's not our hands. It's the size of our God. Walk in the double blessings of God. And the most important thing of anything that we've said is if you don't know Jesus Christ, if you're not walking in the double blessings, if you're not walking in the blessings, if you're like Gehazi and you're laying up lazy someplace with every excuse in the world, today's the day to accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior and live for him the rest of your life. Thank you for giving us the time. Time's a rare commodity, and one day time will be no more. Thank you so much. Again, accept Jesus Christ as your Savior. Pass it on. Larry Carter, we thank you, and Miss D. Carter. Larry's brother, Homer, needs a really touch of God. And, and so we ask that. But God be with you, and may you live in the double portion of God's blessing. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. <laughs>